of the Midnight Cry every Tuesday from now on in this new season beginning at the beginning of March as you know and it's at 2 p.m. the new time 2 p.m. UK time and I am Lindsay Griffiths your presenter and I'm here to tell you that we're living in the last of the last days 
and the fulfillment of the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ. ECC TV, after whom this channel is named the Every Creature Commission Television. This great commission to preach the gospel to every creature, to all nations. Jesus said, when the gospel has been preached to all nations, then the end shall come. And this is very, very near. And this is our great commission that we serve him through this television channel. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So are you ready? It's time to be ready because it's very, very near the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the second coming. Because we don't want to be like the foolish virgins in the word of God in Matthew 25, who said, Lord, Lord, we didn't know. We didn't know. We weren't ready for your coming. We were asleep. We don't want to be like the goat nations when Jesus comes to judge. And there's a sheep on one side and the goats on the other. And they say, Lord, we didn't know. We don't want to be like the false church who said, I cast out devils in your name, healed the sick in your name, did all these good works. And he says, depart from me, for I never knew you. We don't want to be like these. We want to be the ones to whom Jesus will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Because those who endure, who stay faithful to the end, to his coming, they shall be blessed, they shall be saved. All these things are in the word of God, in the Bible, the end times. And he said the very last words almost in the book of Revelation, the very last book of the Bible, where he says, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last the beginning and the end and he says behold I come quickly that's what that song the midnight cry is all about that's what this program is all about and it's so exciting and I thank you Lord Jesus I thank you this program is dedicated to him and to Father Son Holy Spirit to have the preeminence Jesus said I must have the preeminence so he is the Lord of the airwaves and he is in charge of this program. And we need to be looking forward to these days, even though they are troubled and difficult times. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow in the words of the song. He 
It's so true. You see, when we ask Jesus into our hearts and repent of our sins and become born again, we become a new creation. Like uh, it says in John chapter 3, when Jesus said to Nicodemus, he said to him, ye must be born again. And Nicodemus didn't understand that. He only thought in the natural, in the physical. But we are physically born. Certainly we are from our mother's womb. Every one of us is physically born. But then we have to be born again by the Spirit. And when we do that, we are a new creation. So we really can say this. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. You see, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Because we've got him and he is the life, the way, the truth and the life living in us. His spirit guiding us and his word, the word of God, telling us about all these things that are going to happen and not to be afraid, but to trust in him. Because these are the end times. They are not easy. There are many things that are prophesied that will happen. Wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, and all sorts of things in diverse places. So what those of us who are already believers need to realize is what the church is for. The church is the bride of Christ, our soon coming king. Remember the four square gospel. Jesus, our Savior. He's our Savior, as we just sing. He's our healer. He's our baptizer in the Holy Ghost and our soon coming King. I'd like to read, before we do some very deep scriptures today from the book of Daniel, I'd just like to read from a, a book called Born Free because those of us, who are Christians, it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. This is a study of the book of Galatians by George Mitchell. And there's a wonderful part I was just reading about the purpose of the church. It says, Jesus is a saviour. He's the saviour actually, the rescuer, the deliverer, the great emancipator from the slavery or bondage of sin. It's rescued us. He's rescued us. And then he goes on to say, in the words of a chorus that he used to sing in the mission hall as a young man, he rescued me, his own to be. A brand from the burning, he set me free. Oh, how I'll praise him for eternity. A brand from the burning, he rescued me. You see, this is what Jesus did. He rescued us from the fires of hell. Really, this is true. He goes on in this book, a church is not so much a hospital for the spiritually wounded or a social club for people who like to play silly games as a rescue shop for those in danger of losing salvation. In this evil age in which we live, Christians are not taken out of the world like the people zapped away to another time zone in Star Trek or Doctor Who. Christians are placed by God in the world to give hope and shed light and be salt. Christians have inherited the Jewish idea of the two ages. This is really important, dear viewers and listeners. The two ages are called, in Hebrew, Haolam Hazeh, this age, and Haolam Haba, the coming age. Christians are rescued so they may live in this evil age, the end times, a very evil age, it's prophesied in the word. Life which displays the quality of the life to come. So we are as Jesus on the earth, are walking as him, and our job is to bring the kingdom to earth, to bring the heavens to earth. Like what salmon swimming against the current, it says. But you know what? We may seem to be swimming against the current, but the joy of the Lord is our strength. And he gives us strength to swim against the current. He does. So, just think on these things. This age that we're living in is an age 
when we're coming up to the tribulation, it's called, a time of trouble like no other trouble ever on the earth. Tribulation. With increasing darkness all around us. And the church, they've desperately tried the world system, if you like, which is the system of the Antichrist, the system of the God of this world, the devil, has desperately tried to shut up all the Christian voices, the voice of God, the voice of Jesus in the world, desperately tried to shut us up. But we are not there to be shut up. We are there to preach Christ crucified, risen again, and the soon coming King. That's what we're there to do. And we need to make that decision now that they can take everything they like from us but they can't take Jesus from us because we are his we are dead and our life our old selves are dead and our lives are hidden in Christ and I, I want to uh, do a little bit from the book of Daniel with you shortly which is a very 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 deep prophetic book about the end times I won't talk to you more about that um, shortly I just like you first to make up your minds now that you're going to put Jesus first and that includes those who are already Christian believers who say they are Christian put Jesus first and just listen to the words of this song I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold I'd rather be his Silver or gold, I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by.
this world of force today. This world of force today. I'd rather have Jesus. We need to stay true and faithful to Him because He is faithful that promised. And there is so much faithlessness in the world in the so-called faith communities. If you were quick and observant there, you may have seen a picture of the previous Pope deeply into the occult in some sort of aborigine ceremony they are taking part in that you see there are false Christs and false prophets everywhere in the world and the Bible says there are many antichrists read 1 John chapter 1 so the, the, the letter first letter of John about that there, there were many antichrists Jesus said in Matthew 25, false Christ shall arise. Don't listen when people say, here he is, or there he is, here's Christ. False Christ shall arise. And then we're also told that in the very last of the last days, there will be a particular antichrist who will appear a man of lawlessness and great evil who will come to the earth. And we'll have a brief time of power called the tribulation. And then the end shall come. He will be totally defeated and annihilated when Jesus returns in all his glory. What will that returning be like? Let me just show you from Matthew 28. Okay, he talks about his returning and how he will come back again and it's you know he he went up he ascended to be with the father after he'd risen from the dead and at the end of matthew it talks about it again um yeah i'm just looking for it actually at the moment um i think it might be in the in the book of acts at the beginning it talks about how you know when he went into heaven he'll come back again as in the clouds, but with thousands and thousands of saints. And I just want to tell you now that there are many, many uh, prophecies in the Old Testament of Jesus coming back again. And I want to study with you some of these just now in the next couple of weeks as well. The book of Daniel, chapters 7 and 8, talks about dreams that Daniel had. I know we think of Daniel in the lion's den, that's true. Um, and we think of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Daniel was a great, great prophet to who, and intercessor to whom God revealed the last things that were going to happen on the earth, the end times. And in Daniel chapter 7, if you have a Bible, please look at this. During the reign of Belshazzar, when Daniel was still relatively young, he was, uh, he, he was still alive over the reigns of many kings. He has this dream. Daniel spake in verse 2 and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the great sea diverse that's different from one another the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings I, and then this one was uh, succeeded by other beasts a second like unto a bear and another like a leopard and in the night visions verse 7 a fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and it had great iron teeth it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns and behold there came up 
among them another little horn in verse 8, before whom they would hear the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes, like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. But look what happens. Jesus has the victory. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him thousand thousand ministered unto him that will be what it's like when he comes back Thousands and thousands with him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Oh Lord, this is a picture of the Lord Jesus. This is just amazing. If you look in Revelation as well, chapter 1, another great book about the end times, full of prophecies and visions, you will see that vision of the great one, the Ancient of Days with thousands and thousands, ten thousands attending on him. And the judgment will be set in these days, in the last days. And the books will be opened. And woe betide those of us who have not got our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You see, all those who have been born again, who have given their lives, their names are recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. All the names are recorded and marked. There's a mark of the beast for unbelievers. We know about this, don't we? The mark of the beast. Many people know of this. Some people believe it's happening already on the earth. People are being given the mark of the beast. No believer must ever take that mark. But they are marked out and sealed by the Holy Spirit. And their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Praise the Lord. Now there are terrible things coming before that with this Antichrist. And we were going to just touch on this a little more. There is the picture of the American dollar bill there. The New World Order. You see that? With the capstone of the pyramid and the all-seeing eye. These are all signs of the end times and the coming of this man of wickedness of evil the antichrist is right in front of you just look at these just look at these pictures wake up and realize you must realize there's an old saying which again was repeated recently in a video i saw of somebody in the states who's being persecuted and destroyed because of her faith or they're trying to destroy her and she said it's me this time. They'll come for me this time. Next time it'll be you or you or you just wake up. So wake up and look at these signs of the times. They're all around you in the words of the song. And concentrate on Jesus. Lift your eyes to him, the soon coming king. For greater is he that is in us. Jesus as believers and he who is in the world. Amarab, in these last days, we will say again in the words of John the Baptist, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. For I, we are here to proclaim Jesus. We are the end time Elijah. Proclaiming the soon coming king this time. There was Elijah the prophet who faced up to Jezebel and the prophets of Baal and destroyed the prophets of Baal. There was John the Baptist who faced up to another Jezebel 
and who proclaim the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and who preach the baptism of purity and repentance in water. And in the end time there is the last Elijah or John the Baptist. The end time church. Glory to God. The glorious bride being prepared without spot or blemish to be holy even as he holy. That's his word to us. Be ye holy. Not self-righteousness. Not thinking we're better than others, but holy as in having Christ Jesus living and shining through us. And in these last days, we are to proclaim, Behold the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world forever and is coming now in glory for his bride and to judge the quick and the dead. That's what we are here for in these end times even amidst the fires of persecution. Forget not my words, says the Lord. Take those words and run with them, said the Lord. Take those words, the pure word, the word of truth, the word of life, the word of God. It is written, said the Lord. That was Jesus' word to the devil on the Mount of Temptation. When the devil came, tormented him after he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Just as the earlier type of Jesus, not Jesus himself, but the prophet Moses, the friend of God, he went up on the mountain to commune with God for 40 days and 40 nights. So Jesus, the one and only begotten Son of God, he went up on the mountain, but the devil tormented him. He was led of the Holy Spirit up there to have these tormenting times of the devil. And what did he say to him? How did he defeat him? He said, it is written. And he got rhema words, words of scripture from the Lord as weapons and the devil had to leave him now in the book of revelation you'll be able to read the end time saints of god overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death because make no mistake about it these times we're living in are so so evil and it talks about this Antichrist in Daniel. We'll talk about it more next week. I, I believe we will. Um, in ja Daniel 7, it says here about verse 13. I saw in the night visions and behold one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him and they was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, all people, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. There you have Daniel prophesying the end times of the soon coming king. You see that? The sun, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. But before, well, it's not going to be good. Not good already in these times. Because we have this great evil rising up, trying to set itself up against God. I feel we need to, uh, we will study that more though as time goes on in the next programs. I encourage you to walk in the supernatural, to seek to understand the Word of God in these end time prophetic books. Just pray for the Holy Spirit to help you to understand as I'm. I have prayed the Holy Spirit to help me to understand these
prophecies about the end times, particularly at the moment in Daniel and Revelation. And don't let anything stop us from telling the story of Jesus and proclaiming his word as the Lamb of God. Our job in these end times, as I've said, is to say, Behold, the Lamb of God is coming. Tell me the story of Jesus. Tell me the story of Jesus. Right on my heart, every
other. No other savior. No other healer. No other baptizer in the Holy Ghost. No other soon coming king. None but Jesus. He has and he must have the preeminence. He says, I am Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. The beginning and the end. He said in John chapter 8, before Abraham was, I am. He is the I am. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. Hallelujah. The Trinity, the I am. Jesus was there when the earth was made. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is called in the book of Revelation the lamb that was slain from before the foundation of the world. So he is the Alpha and Omega, Omega, the first and the last. And he has the keys of death and hell. Don't doubt it. He conquered death when he died and rose again. For all time, the once and for all sacrifice. And we say, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. And hold on, saints and believers. Hold fast the profession of your faith, what you were first given. Let's keep to our first love. Because in the words of this final song for this week there's too much to gain to lose by Dotty Rambo too many miles behind me too many trials To gain, to lose Too many sunsets Lie behind the mountain Too many rivers My feet have walked
dear viewers and listeners, this, if you like, exhortation or word of encouragement today to you is there's too much to gain to lose. Keep on looking to him, the author and finisher, perfecter of our faith. Hallelujah. Keep looking to Jesus, the soon coming King. Till next time. This is Lindsay Griffith signing off from the Midnight Cry and also telling you, dear viewers and listeners, not to go away if you can possibly help it because we have a wonderful new program for you shortly at 3.30 p.m. UK time every Tuesday called Mark and Co. Where Margaret Dransfield, my dear sister, and various guests that she will have on her program will speak out God's heart. Bye. God bless you.